Hey there awesome physics students. I wanted to do an example circuit that demonstrates the difference between voltage and current in a circuit. It's very important to understand how voltage and current behave in circuits. And to do that we're going to lean heavily on a mental model here. Let's just talk about current in this circuit. So imagine we have a circuit here and there's a 9 volt difference between the top and the bottom. It's connected to a battery somewhere. That's not important. And we have 5 amps of current coming out of the battery or out of this, through this wire here. So we just want to talk about current for right now. What happens, the, the current comes to this junction here. What happens at this junction? Well, if we have 5 amps coming in, the principle here is that current is closely related to flow. And so if we have 5 amps of flow coming in, you can think of it as 5 charges coming into that junction then we have to get five charges coming out of the junction. Well, if I have, let's say I have uh, three charges coming down in this direction, then I, that tells me I must have two charges or two amps coming this way, right? Whatever goes in, that's five amps coming in, must equal to whatever goes out. That's two plus three amps going out, all right? Now what happens, what's the current over here through this part of the wire? Well, if 2 amps comes through this part of the wire, that means 2 amps must come through this top part of the wire here. Now what happens at this junction right here? That junction, the current again splits. So this is a principle with flows. If you have pipes and there's a split in the pipes, some of the water goes one direction, some of it goes the other direction. But whatever comes into that junction must go out of the junction. So if I have two amps coming in, if some of it goes this way and some of it goes this way, well, they have no preference here. So one amp is going to go this way and one amp is going to go that way. Now, how did I know it's not one amp and zero amps? Well, again, whatever comes in must go out. Two amps goes into this junction, then I must get one plus one is two going out. That one amp goes through this 3 ohm resistor and that amp over here goes through this 3 ohm resistor and then they come up and they meet here at this junction right here. So if I have one amp going into that junction from this side and one amp going in from the junction from the other side, then what comes out of the junction must be 1 plus 1 going in equals 2 amps going out. That means that 2 amps goes through this 3 ohm resistor, and that means that 2 amps comes out of that 3 ohm resistor. Okay, Whatever goes in must come out. So if you think of these like hoses or pipes, the pipes split here. Uh, if you have 2 gallons of water going into that junction, and you have 1 gallon going this way, 1 gallon going this way, they're going to meet up and you're going to get all 2 gallons coming out. And again, if all 2 gallons going into this hose, then all two gallons must come out of that hose. There's nowhere else for it to go. Okay, so if you have three amps coming into this resistor, that means three amps go through that resistor and three amps come out of the resistor. And finally, at this junction, this is the last junction here, you get two amps going into that junction, three from the, the side, three amps coming into the junction from the top, three plus two is five, that means you must have five amps going out of the junction. Okay. Again, if this is a battery here, you have 5 amps coming out of the positive side of the battery. It, it may split off and branch, but whatever comes in must go out. And so again, you must have 5 amps coming back into the negative side of the battery. Okay. You cannot have an accumulation of charge on either side of the battery. Okay. Hopefully this helps you understand what how current behaves. It's very important to understand this model so that you can do uh, more complicated problems later.